as I was introduced, my name is Tejas. I'm not contagious. I'm also not vaccinated, but you know, it's a process. Um, but this is just a nice mnemonic to help white people pronounce my Indian name. Um, and I currently work, as of today, I work at a company called, uh, well, not as of today, like for a while, I've been working at a company called G2I. Um, and what we do is we help JavaScript engineers, uh, TypeScript engineers, maybe some Flutter engineers find good work. The name G2I stands for good news to internet. And they just try to be good, good people, you know. Um, and conversely, we help companies that use this stuff find good engineers. So if you want a job or something, um, G2I.co. Um, hit it up, but uh, that, that that's changing for me. I, I recently quit, um, and you know it's a great company, but I I want different things at this stage. So I will be joining Spotify next week. Um, I have a, I made a bit of a rap song to celebrate that. If you want, go on my Twitter at Tejas Kumar underscore um, to treat yourself. Anyway, that's that's not why we're here. Okay, we're not here to just. Uh, I could rap this whole talk. That'd be fun. Maybe next time. Um, but we are here today to talk about explosive velocity with Next.js, TypeScript, and Tailwind CSS. We'll talk about more um, if there's time. This is meant to be a full stack talk, and I'd love to talk about the cloud components, um, AWS, databases, Kubernetes, things like that. Um, but we'll start with the front end and kind of move our way across the stack. We may run out of time. If we do, uh, sorry, but we'll do a workshop or something. Um, to get started, let's talk about what we mean by explosive. Does it mean we create things that are so buggy they explode randomly? That is not what that means. Uh, instead, by explosive velocity, I'm speaking to the idea of move fast and break things, but safely. Uh, break things predictably. Break your own things. We don't break other people's things. Uh, so we want to look at ways we can do that with modern web apps. Um, and do it safely. Now, the, the title, again, um, Explosive Velocity with Modern Web Technologies. Um, I did mention it's meant to be a full stack situation, and hopefully it will be, but I want you to understand off the bat um, that this talk is geared towards somebody who would be willing to start a product, a service, a company, and kind of ship something extremely fast. Um, uh, like an entire product, as the talk description mentions, front end, back end, whatever. Um, but the goal is speed. Let's get something in the cloud as fast as possible and have people use it. Um, and oftentimes when you want to do that, we were just talking um, before the talk. I was talking with um, Alex, I think. I can't see your name on Zoom. Alex. Okay, I was talking with Alex. And, you know, it doesn't make sense to just build a bunch of servers and databases in your first few weeks of the company without anything to offer your customers. You often start with the front end, even if it's a landing page, just to give people something to be excited about that they can see and hopefully touch and feel. And so in that spirit, we'll start with the front end. Um, it's 40 minutes, so I don't know if we had time to cover all of it, but we'll make it up as we go. Um, so it'll be focused on the front end. I just want to get that clear, but with time, we might go to the other stuff. If not, we'll do a workshop. So with that, let's focus on some front end components, uh, Next.js, Tailwind, Tailwind CSS, and TypeScript. Um, these three things, I believe, are like the holy trinity of any modern web app and setup. I, I believe firmly that this is the best way to create something fast and safely. Um, let's look at why. Number one, each of them have very strong opinions on how you should write your code and structure your product. And because of their strong opinions, you don't have to sit around fighting about, you know, hey, where do we put our routes? How do we split our... You don't have to worry about these things. They make the decision for you so that you can actually focus on what matters, which is your product and your customers, most importantly. Um, they give you a layer of predictability. Um, because of their opinions, you, they behave in a way you'd expect them to. Um, and we look more at these things in the demo. But with TypeScript, this especially helps because TypeScript compiles your code ahead of time. And if you do something nonsensical, it'll just tell you, hey, you're comparing an apple to an apple here. It doesn't make any sense because it's always going to be true. Um, let's break down these layers just one level deeper, um, starting with Next.js. Um, Next.js allows many different things. On the, uh, I don't know if you hear that. Um, apparently, this talk is so good, somebody called the police. No, um, but um, so Next.js allows you to render your app in many different ways. We'll talk more about these. Effectively, you could have something that just kind of loads and then you get a spinner and you get data from somewhere. 
Um, it also allows you to do the old PHP style of, of building and rendering web pages and shipping HTML across the wire to your users. And this, we'll talk, we'll spend some time talking about this. I believe ISR, incremental static regeneration, is the future of modern web pages and even web apps um, because of its performance benefits. And Next.js kind of makes this really trivial. Um, Next handles routing for you. So you're not having to sit there thinking about, oh, how do I send people when they visit this path to that thing and so on. Um, and of course, it also allows you to split your code out. This is really important. I believe it's fundamental to creating a good web product because the less code you ship, the faster it makes it across the wire, the faster your people get what they want and the more they like you as a result. I have research with numbers to prove that. Um, Tailwind CSS, it saves you time and allows you to build faster, safer, because it contains atomic CSS. This is huge. Um, for those of you who are not so much into CSS or, or you know, front end or web, um, oftentimes what people will do as they build out web pages or web apps is ship like the same line of CSS 10,000 times across n, n number of different classes or, or CSS declaration sets. So for example, um, you know, a classic CSS rule is display flex that will allow you to create a box that puts things side by side. Um, if you have like five different boxes and you want each of them to have things side by side, you'll write display flex for each of them um, most often. And you can maybe abstract this away, but by the nature of CSS, you're bound to repeat a few rules sometimes. Tailwind has an atomic model where literally one class maps to one CSS rule. Um, and that way, that CSS rule is written and shipped one time. Um, your user is downloaded one time um, and it, it, it kind of just works across the whole app as expected. But then you might think Shit, if it's one class name per CSS rule, that's going to be a massive CSS file. Um, but at build time, before you ship your final product, it will literally look at what you're using and only ship those classes and those CSS rules. Um, because Tailwind CSS is opinionated, it also gives you powerful auto-completion uh, out of the box uh, directly in your editor. So you don't have to think about CSS. You literally, like, I, I feel like if you're a web developer, uh, CSS might be the hardest thing, right? And so you don't even have to think about that stuff in Tailwind. Um, finally, let's talk about TypeScript. It makes things predictable. As we said, it, it, it compiles your JavaScript, not at the time of execution, but ahead of the time of execution. Meaning um, your code's kind of always being checked in the background for exceptions. And when it encounters something nonsensical or broken, if you're trying, for example, to um, you know, sum a number with a Boolean, um, TypeScript will tell you ahead of time before your users tell you that something's broken in production. Now, if you're using JavaScript on the web, your users will tell you things are broken instead. Um, with that, TypeScript also gives you auto-completion. I don't write code anymore. I just press tab a few times and things happen. Um, so with that, we're able to move exceedingly fast. And lastly, it protects you from yourself, especially when combined with unit tests. But I feel like we've been talking way too much. Um, let's actually build the product and ship it really fast. Um, so, you know, let's just zoom out. Let's zoom out of this presentation situation and let's go, let's go here. Um, I'll go to my lab. Uh, let me maybe bump that font size. If, if, Feel free to holler if the font size is too small. Um, and what I'll do is I'll make a folder, which I may already have, let's see. Okay, I don't, nice. Um, and I'm just going to set up a project that we'll build something and ship it really fast. In fact, I'll time it. I have like 20 minutes. Let's see how fast we can go um, across the stack. So I will yarn in it, yes, and this will kind of bootstrap it as a front end project. It's okay, we'll add the back end stuff as we go. And I will add some dependencies here. So I'm adding this dash D signifies developer dependencies. Um, and these are things that will help us build our project. And you'll notice there's TypeScript in here at its next version. We always use an unstable version of TypeScript because if it breaks ahead of time, we know what to expect. Okay, so I added some stuff. Let's go ahead and also add the non-developer dependencies, which are just really three things. Um, and this again, it just allows us, we're, we're going for speed here across the stack. And, and hopefully at the end of the talk, given enough time, we'll build something that can scale as much as it can. Like I, I use the word infinitely, 
kind of as clickbait, but also not because it does scale infinitely. Like there's very, it's almost impossible to reach the limits. So we have everything. Um, what we'll do is let's initialize Tailwind by running that. That's going to just do a bunch of initialization steps. Great. I don't even know what that does, but that's the beauty of abstraction. Um, and it looks like we're good to go. Um, in fact, I don't even need to open the editor at this point. You know what? I'm, let's quit the editor and I'll just echo my first line of code. How about that? Uh, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Make a folder called pages first and I'll run that. Okay. Um, straight from the terminal, I'll do yarn next dev. Um, and it's, it, we've detected TypeScript in your project and they configured everything for me. That's insane. Um, it hasn't even been five minutes. And what we have already is on lo localhost 3000. Um, I don't like, Vivaldi is an awesome browser, but it just like takes forever to start up. Right now. This starting the, okay, so I have my thing. Uh, I, I have a working w web page in like under a minute. Let's um, let's look at what just happened. So if we go open the code, the, the editor, the text editor thing, Visual Studio Code, um, what we'll see is, let me bump the font size here too. So what we have, I, I did that echo command and created pages slash index.ts, um, tsx, with this line, and this line is what we see here. Um, and this is how Next kind of handles routing for us. So I could create another page called pages.tsx and I export a function as the default export that represents a web page. Um, I, and the routing is handled for me. Um, there you go. So I have two pages with, with almost no effort. But it's kind of ugly. And it's not really a product. It's just a thing that says, what's up? Let's maybe productify it a little bit. Um, Let's, I'm assuming familiarity with React at this point. If not, um, that's okay. Um, think of it as a declarative thing where you write HTML style code in JavaScript, but it gets adjusted ahead of time. Um, I mean, sorry, it gets adjusted at build time to, to be JavaScript. Um, so, what, and feel free if you have, this is interactive by the way, if you have questions or something, either just speak. I don't know if that's allowed. If it is, great. Otherwise, um, there's a chat you can answer questions interactively even. Um, anyway, um, so what we'll do is let's make this maybe like a to-do list app because the goal is to build and ship an app that kind of looks pretty really, really fast. So I'll call this my to-do list. Um, if you're not familiar with HTML, it's okay. Um, it's a great programming language, but we don't, it's something you can Google quite easily. And if not, I'm happy to help you out like on Twitter or something. Okay, so we have my to-do list um, and I have, I'll just do like that unordered list with a bunch of list items. One, two, three. Um, great, um, but it's not really a to-do list until you have check boxes. Okay, that, that kind of looks like a to-do list. Um, let's maybe add some behavior to allow me to add an item. We're getting there. We have like, a, we have an apple, it's, it's, it's coming. And notice how quickly we're moving here. Um, let's add a section or a div with a text view uh, and a button, right? A button that says add. We can maybe even, let's, let's make it a bit nicer. Let's give it a placeholder, new to do. Okay, I like it, this is great. Um, it doesn't really do anything though. And this is where we need to lean on React a little bit as a declarative abstraction. Um, it's really bothering me that Prettier can't format this thing as I type, format document. What, why? That's whatever. Yeah, sorry, I'm just gonna restart my, my editor because I, I like the auto format. So again, this is an interactive talk, so if you have questions, feel free to just, um, Again. Why is my thing broken? It's always something. You know, I'll, I'll still be a good guy. And, yeah, yeah, it's much better. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll have we'll just write a bit of JavaScript logic to actually maintain the state of this to-do list. Um, we'll start with to-do items and a function to set to-do items. This is a tuple return to us. 
when we call use state from React. Um, notice how I automatically imported it because TypeScript will know where everything is automatically. And it's an empty array for now. And instead of our list items, we will instead map over that array and map an item to a list item here. Kind of like that. Um, we're not really setting to do items, so let's do this on flip. When you click a button here, um, we will set the to do items to be um, this guy. This, how do we? Well, we need to manage that thing state as well. So we call it new to do, set new to do. And you can see here where the opinions really help you move fast. Um, so we'll say this thing's value is new to do. And when you change it, on change, we get the event from HTML as an argument to a function, and we'll set the new to do to be. Look, no, look how TypeScript's helping me. This is incredible. I don't really have to type anything. It's it's all code that writes itself. Great. Um, and so when I click the button, I want to set the to do items to be a concatenation of the existing to do items, and my new to do. All right. Let's see. Let's see. I don't even know if this is going to work. So it's empty in the beginning. Hello. Okay, so it kind of works. Darkness. My. So this is pretty nice. I could old friend. But you'll notice there's no checkbox. So let's go back and re add our checkbox. Um, and it's looking good. But we need to pause here and iterate, as you would do when you're building any product. Um, this is a non breaking space. I'm not sure if it will actually render. Okay, good. It does. So. We need to pause here. This is a checkpoint in building our product rapidly. We have something that kind of works. It's nice, but it's not a usable app because it doesn't persist any state. Look, like I, I create this list. I even maybe check some things off. Wow, I feel so productive. But I reload the page and it's gone. Um, it's kind of useless. So let's talk back in. Um, unfortunately, for time screens, I'm, I'm going to propose using a back end as a service. Um, and also, really, if you're building a startup and you want to move fast, that's the best way because it's free. Usually, they have a free tier. So it's low cost and speed. Like, why would you not? Um, unless you're doing banking or something secure. But by and large, we're assuming you're not. Um, so if we go to, let's use something called Hasura. Hasura is awesome. So if you go to Hasura.io, uh, I'll log in with my account. Um, what you can do is you can create a project. Um, and I'm, I'll just make a free tier project. I'll call it, uh, I don't know, geez. You can see there's a Gotopia project already, just in case this doesn't work. I've always come prepared for live coding stuff. Um, all right, I'm going to create this project. And it's going to get, so you can see it's initializing here. It's going to get ready. But what this will do is it will give us, for free, a strongly typed API to a database. Um, the database doesn't even exist yet, but like setting the stuff the stuff up, if you're a startup that moves fast, is almost instant. So it's it's been initialized. I'm going to launch the console here, um, and they it's super buggy. Like they shouldn't do this, but it happens sometimes. But I found that if you reload, it's fine. I'm friends with the people who make this, so I kind of know to see like it's it's quite buggy, but it's okay. It works for startups. Um, and you can also scale out of this when you grow. Um, so we go to the data tab, and we shall create a new database. I'm just going to create a database. Um, and literally, instantly, boom, I've, I've created a database. That's nuts. Um, and it's free. That's, it, that's ridiculous. OK. Um, so it's created the database. It has a database URL. And it's now connecting the database to Hasura. Hasura is a thing that gives us an API into the database. And that's done. Um, so that's awesome. I have, I have a database, apparently. Um, let's see. So I can create a table. Um, I'm going to call the table to do items. What do we need? We need an ID. Um, it's a uniquely unique identifier. Um, it's unique. Uh, cool. The primary key will say that's ID. It's got text, of course. Um, it's text. It's not nullable. And we have, you know, is it done? It's a Boolean, right? Um, it's, it is not nullable. Its default value is false. I like this. This makes me happy. All right, let's add a table. Um, 
done. Now let's populate it with something. So to populate, Hasura gives us an opinionated GraphQL API on top of any Postgres database, kind of magically. Um, and so if we go here, we have documentation literally just out of the box. Look at that, that's incredible. Um, everything's known ahead of time. So if you're not familiar with GraphQL, I recommend reading the docs. If not, um, you can follow me here. So I'm writing a mutation to my database. Notice the auto completion helps us. I'm writing a mutation to add a to do. Um, and what I'm going to do is insert to do items. In fact, I'm going to insert one to do item. And the object is, is done. It's false by default. So we'll just do text. Eat cheese. Uh, yeah, it's a vegan one. It is eat. And I get back the ID. Okay. Um, this doesn't have any red squiggly underlines. So it's good. Um, what I do want to do, let's actually play that and see if it works. It did work. I got back an ID. That's great. So I know that it works, but I want to kind of parameterize it. So I'll add a parameter here, um, text, which is a string, and it's required. And I'll just replace this with a reference to that thing above. Okay. Um, so I have a to-do item, eat cheese. Um, let's go to our client, this thing, and make it read from the database. Um, to do that, Let's, I'm just going to comment that stuff out. Let's, let's do a query. A query is when you read, a mutation is when you write. Get to do's. Um, so I want to do items and I want their text. And maybe their is done. And maybe their ID. Um, and I hope you're able to follow along here how quick the auto completion is, like it helps us. So I have this to do item. That's awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this query and paste it in my app. So what I'll do is here, I will um, use effect. And this, if you're not familiar with React, will do something, basically, at the beginning of our app, like a side effect, something. It'll go talk to something. And so I will here fetch my endpoint, which is this. Um, I will send a post request. So method is post. And the body is a JSON string containing my query. And my query, I'm literally just copy pasting this query because I've, I've seen that it works. So I'm just gonna copy paste this um, here. And that's it, I, I, I get my stuff, theoretically. Um, but we need to hold that in state somewhere. But we already have the to-dos held in state somewhere. So I'm just gonna, when this promise resolves, if you're not familiar with promises, it's, it's like an asynchronous result. Um, so whenever that fetch comes back, I'm going to turn it into JSON that I can use. And then when I have JSON that I can use, I'm just going to literally just set them. Um, I'm going to get back data and I will set my to-do items to the data, just like that. This, I'm, I don't know if this is going to work, but we're just, let's try. Um, the goal is to make something like a product that works really fast. Um, okay, it doesn't work. That's sad. So let's, let's, inspect and find out why. Um, and this is all just part of startup life. So something's wrong here. Access denied, aha, there's a password. Um, and the password you can see is included here in our little playground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this. Um, and it's, it's really just a request header. So if you're familiar with HTTP, I'm going to add a header. Notice again, the auto completion here. Um, and I will call this X, I'm just copying it from here. Admin secret. Um, I'm going to delete this project after so like you can try and screw around with my secret, but um, okay, let's try that. Does it work? Okay, it still doesn't work. Um, why doesn't work? Let's, let's check. Do I get back my data from the fetch request? I do, that's great. So I'm getting data, I'm just reading it wrong. Meaning I sh probably shouldn't destructure this object is my guess and it's probably data dots to do because if we look at our response here we can see there's a data key and then there's to do items which is our array that's what we want so data dot to do items um, see if that works it does but as you can see it's an object with keys text is done an id and what we have here is the object so we need to put its text in there instead of, that's up and just like that, we have 
You can, it like literally works with the back end. Um, but if we add a to do, um, not only is it not adding the text, but it's not actually adding it to the back end. So let's fix that. Um, for starters, I'm just going to factor out this this function here. I'm going to call it add to do. Um, and I will define it here. I'll have a function called add to do. Um, and what's it going to do? Well, we will actually save it to the database and then refetch. So to refetch, I'm just going to factor this out and I'll call, I'll create a function called fetch. Uh, maybe I shouldn't call it fetch. I'll call it get to do. It's a bit cleaner. Um, so when I call this function, it's going to go get the to do's and then load it into state. So when my, this is called when my app starts, this function here. So I will get to do's in the very beginning. And that changes nothing. Like if we look at it, you know, the app's going to load, I'm going to get my to do's. That's great. So now to add the to do to the database, um, I already have like a thing written here for it, this mutation. So I'm just going to copy that with the same fetch request. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll copy this fetch request here. But instead of the query, I'm swapping out this with this. Um, notice this query, this has variable text. So I will add a variable and I'll say text is new to do. Um, that looks pretty good. I, and of course, when we finish adding it, what we want to do is just refetch or whatever we call that function, get to do's. So when we're done adding it to the database, we will get to do's just like that. I'm again, I'm literally building this plane in the sky as we're flying it. So let's see if it works. Um, speak at go to all. Nothing happened, and I don't know why, but let's, let's maybe do it with our network tab open. Um, okay, so it's pending. It came back with a 200, but validation failed. It's expecting a value for text, and it's getting nothing. Um, so we're passing this new to-do, but it, it's not actually being updated. Um, and that's interesting. Why is it not being updated? It's, it's clearly working because new to do um, is, um, is, is being set in the input here. So it's, it's just a matter of, of quick debugging. Let's check the variable. So we are actually adding text to speak at Gotopia. It totally works. Um, expecting a value for non nullable variable text. We are literally passing in a variable text. The question, I guess, is how is this different than what we did over here? In fact, we can actually use the playground to replay. And you're welcome to debug this with me. Um, I'm literally doing this for the first time here. So, um, so we don't have any red things. That's fine. Um, text is test. And we'll play this. Does it work? It does. Okay. See, so we even have the new to do. Um, add that. Have we added it successfully? We have not. That's that's so interesting. Expecting a value for non nullable, but there is a value here. Oh, okay. Silly me. It's supposed to be variables, passing in variables. Now, if you had a a proper client for GraphQL that would have caught that. Um, and there is one, it's called Apollo GraphQL. Um, I can recommend using that. We're using fetch here for time anyway. Um, hello world. Okay, so there, it totally worked. Um, testing again, great. And okay, so it totally works as expected, but it's quite ugly, let's quickly we need to move a bit fast because time, um, but let's move on to Tailwind to see how we can make this look like something a customer would want to pay for um, with a bit of speed. So I'm going to swap this out for a header. So it's going to be maybe a bit smaller here. That's fine. But this Times New Roman is not doing it for me. And that's because we haven't yet initialized Tailwind properly. 
Um, to do that, what is happening? Hang on a second. To do that, we will go look at the Tailwind CSS docs. Docs are great. Um, and we just need to do a couple things. Number one, we, we already have an automatically generated Tailwind thing when we did the initialize in the beginning. Just need to update it to include these files. Um, and these docs are the best. So we need to create a like a internal page with Next.js. And you can tell it's internal because it starts with an underscore. Um, and what this, is, what this does is it imports Tailwind CSS. And that'll allow us to style our app with Tailwind. So I'll call it style slash main dot slash um, dot dot slash. And I'll create a new CSS file here. And this, this thing has just one job. That's just to like literally just import some Tailwind. Um, that's pretty much it. So if we reload, it won't look different. But what we've got to do is we've got to go restart our dev server. And now it's going to like bundle in Tailwind styles for us. And I'd like to show you how you can use it to move quite fast with making something pretty. And then I think we'll stop there. I wanted to talk about incremental static regeneration as well. It's not going to happen because um, we have a little bit more time to cover. Um, OK, so you can see it looks different. There's no Times New Roman. Let's quickly make it look a little bit better using Tailwind and its auto completion. So my header, um, we'll give it a class name. And you can see I have some, some nice auto completion here. So I want it to be full width for starters. I want it to have a shadow. Uh, what does that look like? OK, yeah, that's, I want it to maybe have some padding. I want it to be a flex box. And you can kind of just see how it allows me to style things really fast. Um, OK, that's way better already. Let's take this div and maybe give it um, a margin. No, let's, let's give it some padding. So let's give it some padding. And you'll notice this 4 is really nice because you don't have to think about concrete pixel values. So it's very opinionated. We'll give this a border. Um, a nice gray border. We'll say I want it to be rounded. Let's give it some padding. Just go nuts, you know. And you'll notice it's it's not hard or time consuming. That's way too much padding, so we'll maybe make it a bit smaller. Um, let's style our button here to have some padding as well. Maybe let's give it a nice background color. Look at this. We have even auto completion for background colors. Oh, how beautiful! Apple recently launched a new purple iPhone, so let's do purple font bold. Um, and you can see how we can rapidly iterate here in a really predictable way. It's incredible. Um, and it's just updating in real time. Um, this is so much prettier than it was. And we'll finish with giving this a little bit of padding too. Um, and now, there, that's, that's great. I like it. Um, we also have to write some logic to make the the checks happen. Um, should we, shouldn't we? We're, we're really short on time. So I, why not? Let's do it. Um, I'll, I'll finish quickly. Um, do to do. And we will take an ID as a parameter. And we will update. Auto completion helps us move so fast. Set is done to be. Uh, actually, let's, let's parameterize that. Is done. Is it to be a, is done to be is done where id is id okay i don't see any red so i'm just going to make a function here uh const do to do i don't know it will take the to do id uh, which is a string i'm guessing and is done which is a boolean and i will replay that same fetch call um, with a different query in the body. So I'm just going to copy this. And again, I hope you have a client introduction, but we're, you know, startup world here. So we'll copy this, paste this, um, set. So we have two variables, is done and ID. So is done and ID. And we'll just take them from the function above. And when we, so on here, when we click on this checkbox, we will call do to do. And look, the auto completion is telling me how this function works as well. So we'll say i.id 
and uh, the opposite of i dot is done. Okay, and then we'll lastly say this is checked if i dot is done, obviously. That I think should be it. Um, let's see. So if we reload, I'm going to check test. It'll do the thing. Refresh. Okay, so there. So I have two things that I checked. And if I reload, it still persists its state. Great. Let's quickly wrap up what we just saw. Um, so that we did that relatively quickly, I would say. But does it scale? Um, this? Yeah. Because uh, we can, it's just, what we just built was a static site that gets data, which is most apps, by the way. Um, so anything that will host a static site, I think of Vercel or AWS, even S3, will scale that to a CDN near anyone. Um, the database is hosted on Heroku. Um, it can be hosted on AWS. And provided you pay for a larger scale, they will handle that for you with replication. Um, and the API is hosted on Hasura. If you get off the free tier for $99 a month, um, yeah, that, that'll scale infinitely as well. So this can serve billions, um, provided you pay for it. And really, if you can't afford $99 a month after like reaching that much scale, there's probably something wrong with your pricing model because um, it's $99 a month. Um, there's a lot more to be said outside of the UI. Um, for example, cloud providers, AWS, GCP, et cetera, that we won't have time to talk to. But let's quickly recap what we've learned. Um, Predictability allows velocity. Everything we did today was strongly typed and gave us auto completion, which helped us move fast because we, we could predict how the outcome would be based on the suggestions from the editors. We built it with user experience in mind um, because of the type safe tools. And lastly, we planned ahead for load, outsourcing our concerns to Hasura um, and also to Heroku. Um, and so with that, I want to say thank you 